Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and Kazar, Lord of the Savage Land, issue number one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there might be something here, but unfortunately I didn't really grasp onto it very well. Um, let's get talking about it, and that really disappoints me considering some of who's actually involved in this comic book. Let's talk about that before we actually get into the book itself. So Zach Thompson is the writer, German uh, Garcia is the artist, and Matthew Matthias Lopez on color art, VCs Joe Caramagna on letters. Um, Jesus Saez does the cover, and there's a whole bunch of variant covers out there. There's something that they seem to do. Let's make a whole bunch of variant covers out there, and uh, why? Why? It's, it, it's Kazar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Those of us who grew up and read Kazar and really liked Kazar, and, and I'm sure nowadays, if they ever make a movie, you know what I'm saying, you're going to wind up having Kevin Feige come out, like with Shang-Chi. We always used to always call him Shang-Chi. Everybody, including the creators, originally called him Shang-Chi. And I was like, well, the proper pronunciation, if you use the appropriate Mandarin, would actually be Shang-Chi. Okay, that's... Okay, I didn't know that. I don't know that. I'll try and do Shang-Chi, but for the most part, it's Shang-Chi, because that's what I grew up with. Deal with it. Um, and here, they're probably going to turn around, Kevin Feige would be like, it's actually Kazar. It's like, I'm not calling him Kazar. That sounds too much like Kazam. And nobody likes Kazam. Nobody. <laughs> now, with Kazar... Let's be realistic. Kazar is just a Tarzan ripoff. Marvel wanted Tarzan. They couldn't get the license to do Tarzan. So they said they made their own Tarzan, and lots of people have made their own Tarzan. I'm sorry, Turok, anyone, <laughs> right? But uh, And a lot of them have worked really well, including Turok, including Kazar. Freaking really good stuff back in the day. If you're older like me, you remember when Kazar used to run with um, the X-Men. Before that, you probably remember when, when um, Kazar used to run with Daredevil. Right? There was a lot of really good Kazar tie-in stories. And way back in the day, there used to be Kazar comic books. And they were really good. They were fantastic. Um, but you've got to like that idea. A guy with no superpowers going around in a world of dinosaurs. And not just surviving, but thriving. Like, this is, for all intents and purposes, a great character who... With the, with the Jurassic Park plus CGI that's out right now would make for an incredible television series. I have zero doubt in my mind that would be an amazing television series. So in my mind, how do you not get Kazar right? But that's just me. That's just my mind, right? All of these uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle Tarzan stories, you could modify them and make them into, that's what a lot of people have done before, these Kazar stories. And here, unfortunately, we saw this thing with the the Katatl War, which I didn't like when they made the Katatl evil. I I've I've read those comic books. I did the reviews for them. I've talked about it here. One of the biggest things that made me not want to read comic books nowadays was literally that, because if you read those old Avengers comic books, the the Cree, uh, the Cree Scroll Wars. And the the desolation of the Katatl, you know, like what 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 has been done to them, and the idea that they turned around, and they wanted becoming this, they were always this benevolent, and they still they 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 practiced peace, regardless. They were the the Tibetan monks, the Tibetan Buddhist monks, in the Marvel comic books, and they turn around like they were actually evil all along. No. That that just ruined so much that when all of a sudden freaking Jason Aaron comes along, it's like, hey, let's just wreck everything and masturbate in 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 the in Jack Kirby's face, you know? Uh, and they're like, oh, let's make um and, and Roy Thomas and all these guys, people, some people who are still alive today. Let's let's turn around and make uh, Thor's mom not Gaia, you know, so that he's actually the brother of freaking Hercules. No, no, no. No, screw that. Let's make it the Phoenix instead, because that'll fit the th stuff that I'm doing. And go away. You've got so much go away heat on you with me right now. Go away. So much of the stories nowadays, I, I just don't care anymore. Too much change for the sake of change. And it's not working. It's not working. It's clear. It's evident. This stuff just isn't working. So when I see... 
that he was killed in the Katata thing. I'm like, I don't know what else. Like, honestly, who cares? I think I might have even said if I didn't, I'm saying it now. KSR is one of those characters nobody's been able to get right in a long time. So you know what? Fine, kill him. I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't even care at this point. But he's a character who should probably stay dead then. He's got a son. Let his son come forward and do something great. I mean, that you could tell all those old KSR stories again and doing it in his father's memory. And just, you know, instead of my father was a jerk, oh, my father was the best. Here they bring him back and they're kind of making him bad. And I don't really want to see that. Look, when they brought Shana, the She-Devil, back, that was actually really cool. I dug on that. I really did. It was a great story. She was insane. It was really strong storytelling. But I see this. I'm just like, eh. Eh. Maybe, by the way, maybe strong storytelling wasn't the best thing. But anyway, it was storytelling, and it, and it got me engaged. Anyway, I see something like this, and I'm just like, he's not really the good guy anymore. He's He's corporate, and he's got superpowers now. He's basically a symbiote without being a symbiote. You know, I was just, I went to Walmart today. I know, I know, I know. I went to the Evil Empire. Went to Walmart today because they have a whole bunch of Marvel Legends toys. And and they had the new Odin figure, and I'm not really that interested in it. So I just, I looked at it, I was like, eh, and I put it down. You know, saying, not really interested in it. I did get a Batman toy, the, 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 the 66 Bat Batman toy. So that was cool. The Adam West thing. That was cool. Six inches. Todd McFarlane did a six-inch toy. If you're not into Marvel Legends and all those, you, you have no idea what I'm talking about, so let's move on. But then I'm looking around, and I saw, oh, they've already got two whole entire aisles of Halloween costumes, including a few other, you know, home decorations for uh, in another aisle. But two aisles of Halloween con um, uh, costumes, one for adults, one aisle for the kids. And I go down the kids' aisle, and I'm going to say that hat, like the, the girl stuff was on the left, and the boy stuff was on the right. And I'm not joking when I say half of what was on the right was actually Marvel symbiote stuff. They actually had, like, Iron Patriot as a symbiote, Hulk as a symbiote, Iron Man as a symbiote, Captain America as a symbiote, Venom as a venomized symbiote. I don't know what the hell they had. They had Venom there also, just regular old Venom. But the idea is they had all of this stuff, and I'm like, what? In the hell? First off, these kids today aren't going to know what this stuff is. The kids today can't watch the Venom. So, like, my kids can't watch Venom. I'm not going to let my kids watch Venom. First off, Venom was a horrible movie to begin with. The second movie is probably going to be just as bad or worse. And they're they're rated so that they're not for kids. You know what I'm saying? i got a six-year-old and an eight-year-old. I can't let them watch the Venom movie. Like, Venom's really scary, right? He's like, Venom is super scary. They 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 played the Lego Marvel superheroes game. There's three of them. And in one of them, I think it's the original one, Venom shows up. And, like, it's dark. And, and all of a sudden you see Venom's Lego face. It's a Venom Lego face. But he shows up like, <sighs> and it scared them. And they're like, I, I can't look at it. I'll play the game and I love I love the game and blah, 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 blah. But when I get to the, the Venom, uh, the, yeah, the Venom scene, I have to turn my head. I have to turn away and I have to close my eyes. I'm like, wow, you, you kids are smart. You do what you can to not be afraid, to conquer your fear, to, to move away. You know what, what you can and can't handle. Awesome. I love it, right? Venom's a scary character. Why do they get all these freaking Venom suits out? Okay, I went into a rant about freaking Venom. Anyway, that's stupid. And I would never, and my kids would never want to, they'd rather be a freaking pirate. Pirates aren't even in fashion anymore. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, um... Cowboys are because of Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> but I'm telling you, man, like, Ven really? So, so what do they do? Like, Kazar is boring. Let's give him a Venom symbiote. But let's not actually make it a Venom symbiote. And instead, there's this new corporation out, and it's it's basically like the new version of Roxxon. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe one of these days we get whatever this corporation was called. I don't remember what it's called. I don't feel like clicking through this stuff because I'm looking at this stuff online now. Um... I don't feel like clicking through to find out what the name of the freaking thing was, but maybe them versus Roxen, or maybe they're they're actually a distributor of Roxen, or whatever. Maybe something. I honestly, I don't know. I don't care. Kazar should have stayed dead, though. You killed him. Fine. It was a screw up. Who cares? Keep the character dead. He's got a son. That's how these things move on, right? But then I see his son has got some kind of flower power, and no, I'm not saying he's a freaking hippie. No, 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 no. By the way, f hippies. 
<laughs> anyway, he's sitting there, he's like, boo, he shoots flowers at people, like flower petals at this big monster thing. I'm like, I'm sorry, what am I seeing here? And suddenly, I don't want to see the sun. But now Kazar is back. I'm like, okay, so maybe the Kazar will be good. But no, he's got this, he made this tail that holds his knife by the blade with his loincloth. I'm surprised I even turned the page to finish the comic book. I was so completely turned off by that. I, I said, I, honestly, I said, how did I have the strength? Like, I just went full Green Lantern with my willpower to turn the page alone. Maybe this is a way of making it so that, hey, okay, they killed him with this and they assigned me to do this, so let me bring him back and let me try and do it as good as I possibly can. Maybe Zach Thompson could do a good job with it. Honestly, I don't know. But I am not enjoying this story much right now. Or, it's, I can't even say that. I can't even say that right now. Maybe the story's going to be good, but he's got to work. Zach Thompson has to work with what he's got to work with. Kazar is back. He killed by the Katatl thing. Now he's got these superpowers, and his son's got superpowers, and everybody's got superpowers. Zabu's going to be walking, walking around. Uh, the power of a skunk. He's going to, like, fart a stink cloud that's going to, like, drop a T-Rex or something. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the Dinobots are going to show up at some freaking point. I don't know anymore, right? But the stuff that he's got to work with in this story is just killing it for me. But what actually put the death knell in it. Does anybody remember German Garcia? Do you remember how amazing this guy was? Dude, this guy goes back. I mean, maybe there's some, some young bucks out there who are just like, you know, oh, I just started reading comic books in the past two years. Well, then you don't remember how amazing uh, German Garcia used to be. He was, wow. He was one of the guys that they said... This guy can replace, um, oh, why can I not remember his name right now? Lee. That, the guy who's the publisher of, or whatever, the publisher equivalent at uh, DC Comics right now. Not Jason Lee, not Brandon Lee. Crap, why can't I remember his freaking name? Anyway, he's a real nice guy in person, but like he sucks at his job and he should just do art. And all he wants to do is art. We can't really do art anymore. Anyway, um, yeah, the guy who started... Why the... F can I not remember this guy's name? I'm going to make sure I put it here so that you can see it because, wow, I feel so dumb. I can't remember this guy's name right now. But anyway, yeah. Uh. <laughs> this guy, German Garcia, is one of the guys who replaced him. And it was, it was good enough that we could say he could replace him. And it was good. I enjoyed it. I see this issue. And anybody who... This is their first... German Garcia comic book is going to say, wow, this guy absolutely sucks. This guy sucks. And I can't blame them. All I can say is, dude, go back and look at his other stuff from back in the day when he didn't suck. This doesn't even work with the comic book. Right? I just did the, 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 the uh, Black Manta comic book review before this where the art wasn't great, but it still worked with the story. This doesn't even work with the story. There's just blobs of stuff. And thank God that Matthew Lopez was there to at least add a little bit of blushing color to the cheeks and stuff like that, you know? I don't want to be a jerk here, but there are some colorists out there, and I've named them... whatever. Um, some colorists who can, who can say, hey, here's a horrible penciler who I don't even think he does inks, but here's some pencils and just whatever. It's just a, a blob, and it's supposed to be with eyes and a mouth you know what? I can work with this and I can actually make the face into a real face. I can make it look good. Here, Matthew Lopez doesn't seem to have that kind of talent. I'm not mad at him for it. Uh, Matthias, excuse me, Matthias Lopez. I'm not mad at him for it. He's just... Matthew Lopez is... Matthias Lopez is a fine colorist, from what I can tell here. But he can't fix what German Garcia did. In this comic book, German absolutely crapped the bed as far as the, the art, the pencils in this book. Absolutely horrible. And he did the inks, if you can even call him that. So, so he's got nobody to blame. You can't turn around and be like, Vince Coletta on Jack Kirby. Look what he's done. Eh, you can't even do that. 
this is just a case where German, you remember who German used to be? Because that's not who he is anymore. At least not with this comic book. I I would love to see this guy come back and be what he used to be. But for right now, I was so disappointed with his art in this. And all I could do is think of the days of yore when he used to be good. When his name meant something positive. This was wretched. <laughs> wow. I feel bad for being coming down so hard on him, but... All I'm doing is reviewing it, man. I had, I had to actually look at the art in this. Anyway, guys, uh, hopefully, I don't know. I can't read issue two. Hopefully, Zach, Thomas, uh, Zach Thompson can do something with this. Hopefully, he can bring Kazar back to what he used to be. Honestly, if it were me, I would tell Marvel that the only way that I'm doing this comic book is if I can actually put the nail in Kazar's history, in his story, in his coffin, like that's it. Kazar is done. His son loses his stupid little freaking flower power magic crap. All right, and then we just get all new Kazar comic books with his son, and Zabu shows up, and and he's got the advice of his mom every so often. You know, that's it. She like she could be the. You're gonna look at the hero's journey. Here's this kid whose father was killed trying to protect him, and his mom could wind up being the old man so to speak, you know what I'm saying, in, in, in the hero's journey stories. And he just goes on and, and he has to live up to the name of Plunder and decide, will he go the way of my grandfather or will he go the way of my um, my father, right? Uh, what will I do with the Plunder name? Uh, that, that, I think, would be an amazing story. And it would be something that could lead to something. And like I said, a, a Kazar TV show would be out of this world amazing and people of all ages would watch it i promise you that people would watch the hell out of that this right now with what zach has to work with uh, anyway guys i'm i'm done <laughs> i'm done i'm not reading this anymore this sucks and i'll talk to you guys later uh like the video watch an ad professor bill comic book university class dismissed